Welcome back to Shangel Club. We're gonna be watching behind the scenes of photography of food. Let's see what they do to make it look so pretty and awesome. And when you get it in real, it's like not exactly on the picture. So let's see what they do. Let's go with this hamburger. What do they do to make this hamburger look so puffy? Good grammar and spelling and are pretty. Good, but if you want to write essays that inspire, messages that forge brighter. Cardboard? Interesting. Wait, motor oil? Are you kidding me? That's what they use for syrup? I guess you never eat after advertising <laughs> pancakes. Hmm, maybe I should try that. Trying photography of ads. Hmm, maybe next time I should try that. But yeah, remind me never to eat those kinds of pancakes in photography. <laughs> they use a blowtorch? Makeup sponge? Glue? Glue? I'm in shock. That would explain why that has more foam in it. Wait, that is ice cream? Let me go back. How is ice cream made? Corn syrup, shortening, food coloring. So out of shortening? That is a lie. <laughs> See, chicken. More dish soap. I'm in shock. I would explain. That would so explain the perfect of a chicken. That will definitely explain. I was not expecting dish soap. Oh my gosh. Wow. Dish soap on a chicken. That will explain all those photographies that they're so perfect. Like literally. That would explain. I'm in shock. <laughs> like literally in shock. Okay, well let's watch on. I'm like in shock. Shaving cream. On a pie? I 
I have to explain why it's so full too. And I'm like, perfect. Huh? Pain buds? You're kidding me? Where to? Uh, let's move on. When someone in a commercial splits open a dinner roll, opens up a Big Mac carton or a microwaves popcorn, you can be sure that the product will be steaming like a tea kettle. Of course, we all know that commercial shoots are a long process involving lots of takes, and that nobody is on set constantly cooking up steaming batches of product. But the secret behind those steamy shots is as simple as it is clever. Most food doesn't have a very high water content, so it stops steaming pretty quickly as it cools down. But cotton balls can hold plenty of water, and if soaked cotton balls, cotton balls? Away, they'll keep steaming for much longer than your average burger. Photographers will strategically place them behind or around a product, enabling them to get that perfect shot that gives that product a just cooked appearance. Hmm. Mashed potatoes are the unsung heroes of advertising photography. They're yep. easy to work with and model, keep for a long time, and won't melt or run under hot lights. Over True. the years, advertisers have found a number of ways to use mashed potatoes to make other foods look better on camera. They can be used to add volume to meat products like roasts and whole chickens, simply by injecting them into the desired area. Mashed potatoes and... Into pies ...to give the filling a sturdy consistency that won't pie? in a piece's cup. But by Are you far, kidding the most me? popular use in advertising photography is as a stand-in for ice cream. Ice cream is incredibly difficult to photograph, especially because it needs to look ice cold. The hot lights used on a photography set will cause it to start melting within seconds. But mashed potatoes don't have this problem. Adding colors and mix-ins makes the illusion complete. Mashed potatoes for ice cream. It's nearly impossible to tell the difference. If you've ever seen a picture of frosty cold ice cream that made you just have to go out and get some, it's almost certain that you were actually looking at mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes for ice cream? You gotta be kidding me. There are also a number of problems photographers encounter when trying to photograph milk. It tends to look thin and not quite wide enough on camera, and its most typical use in advertising, as a co-star in cereal ads, presents even more issues. Cereal has to look crunchy and fresh in ads, and as we all know, it doesn't take most cereals very long to become soggy. That is why the milk you see in these ads isn't milk at all, it's glue. Regular Elmer's glue contains its stark white on the camera, and it's so thick that no cereal is heavy enough to sink inside it. The cereal bowls you see in these ads are Oh my gosh, it's glue! Poured in, and a sprinkling of cereal is laid over the top. Photographers can shoot for hours, and the cereal will stay fresh and dry while the phony milk never loses its milkiness. When you see an advertisement for a restaurant or a steakhouse, the steaks always appear grilled to perfection. You can tell because they're pink and juicy on the inside, with distinct grill marks on the outside, the marks of an excellent steak. They may not always get it right in the restaurant, but advertisers make sure that what you see on TV is as appetizing as possible. And they do it in one of the least appetizing ways imaginable. The steaks used in these ads are not even cooked on a grill at all. It's too hard to achieve that perfect pinkness that way. Instead, they're cooked in an oven or on a flat grill. And then the grill marks are painted on with shoe or boot polish. That Ew! That exactly be a tasty steak, but it sure looks good on camera. I guess camera deceives the eye, pictures deceive the eye, that's for certain. It's as difficult to work with as ice cream if you're trying to use it in an advertising shoot. It doesn't have a consistent thickness, tends to get running, and will begin melting under hot lights in mere seconds. Fortunately for photographers, there's a common product that looks identical to whipped cream but doesn't have these problems. It's shaving cream, and every ad you've yeah. ever seen featuring a milkshake, parfait, or slice of pie with a dollop of whipped cream on top didn't actually use whipped cream at all. Shaving cream holds up for much longer, won't melt, and and is easy to sculpt and shape in whatever way the photographer wishes. Just like with mashed potatoes and whipped cream, it's impossible for your eye to tell the difference. If you're wondering if some unlucky crew member on a commercial shoot ever picked up the wrong drink by accident and got a mouthful of Barbasol, well, that's never been documented. But the law of averages and Murphy's Law both dictate that yes, it almost certainly has. Yo. Distributors of fresh fruit have their own tricks for making the product look more appealing in person. A lot of the fruit you find in grocery stores actually has a very thin wax coating to make it appear more shiny. But this isn't quite enough for TV cameras, so photographers have discovered another trick to make fruit really pop in advertisements. If you're a little put off by that wax coating, you can at least keep in mind that wax is edible and won't harm you. Spray deodorant, on the other hand, should never come anywhere near fruit <laughs> unless it's starring in a commercial. Photographers spray down apples, grapes, pears, and practically anything else that has a skin with a liberal coating of spray deodorant to give them that ultra shiny look that we associate with being natural, even though it is anything but. 
deodorant? Wow, I'm mind blown by this. Presents a big problem if you have to photograph sauces. At their correct consistency, sauces tend to look thin and watered down on camera, and can also appear dull or lacking in color. Some sauces can also separate over the course of a long shoot, but photographers have found a simple addition that solves all of these problems at once. It's wax. Simple, ordinary wax with some coloring additives. Red wax, for example, can make the color of a red sauce pop while making it appear to have the desired robust consistency on camera. Different colors can be used to tweak a sauce's on-camera appearance until it's just right, and the wax will keep the sauce from separating over the length of the shoot. It can also be used to thicken a sauce up enough to get those pouring shots, which can be nearly impossible to achieve otherwise. Cardboard is second only to mashed potatoes as the MVP of ad photography. Whenever you see a shot of a slice of layer cake with perfectly even distribution of cake and frosting, you can bet that there are a couple of extra layers. Photographers will insert pieces of cardboard in between the layers of the cake, then pipe the frosting onto the cardboard. This helps ensure that there are no would explain the, the perfect the slices. Simply cutting a piece of cake, and that the layers of cake and frosting look perfectly uniform. Cardboard is also used to make sure that every fast food burger you see in an ad looks perfect. Condiments like lettuce, tomatoes, and pickles are always positioned precisely in these shots, and this is done by slipping a layer of cardboard in on top of the burger patty. The fixings are then meticulously positioned for the camera hmm. and held in place by pins. You might complain that your fast food burgers never look like the ones in the ads, but you really wouldn't want the one from the ad. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. For a mouthful of packing materials. Anyone who has ever tried to cook a perfect chicken or turkey knows how difficult it is. In advertisements, yep. all the look plump, juicy, and golden brown. And as you may have guessed, it's not because advertisers hire world-class chefs to cook up amazingly photogenic birds. In fact, the whole birds you see in advertisements would not be delicious. They wouldn't even be edible. The birds used for these photo shoots are barely cooked, just enough to make them more sturdy. Then they're typically stuffed with paper towels to puff them up before being sewn shut. Areas that still look a little saggy can be pumped up with those mashed potatoes and then the entire bird is painted by an airbrush artist to achieve that perfect golden brown tone it makes for a delectable looking bird but this technique probably won't work so well for your next thanksgiving dinner nope A fluffy stack of pancakes with warm maple syrup is a great way to start the morning. And advertisers know that this image will get your stomach rumbling. The problem with getting this on camera is that almost all pancakes absorb syrup pretty quickly, making it tough to get across how rich and thick your syrup is. To avoid this, photographers will spray down each pancake with a coating of fabric protector like Scotchgar, keeping them. And now it's fabric protector. What don't they do to those poor, poor pancakes? It doesn't always photograph well. This is why many of these types of advertisements don't use real syrup. That's 10W30 motor oil getting poured all over those flapjacks. Sure, they were already ruined by the Scotch Guard, but somehow that just doesn't seem right. <laughs> okay, this just blown my mind. Like, that would explain so, so much why those shots are so perfect. And then. When you see behind the scenes, you're like, Ew! But the picture looks perfect, and behind the scenes, you're thinking, Oh boy. I don't know. Comment below if I should try those hacks in photography and see how good those pictures will come out. I think I might try them and see how they come out i don't know it looks cool as pictures but it's not edible for those advertisements so stay tuned i think i'll actually try a few of them see if they actually work for talk for photography but yeah my mind is blown just blown wow never thought they would use motor oil for pancakes looks awesome on the shop then I'll, I might try but then I won't be able to eat those pancakes hmm I don't know I'll see I'll see if I will try those shots 
see how cool they look at shots. All right, subscribe if you didn't. My name's Angie. Hit the like button for. See ya. Bye.